Okay, so the last time we learned about the state of New York, we learned a lot. Like, we learned where the best places to live are, where the worst places in the state are, and other important information. On paper, sadly, most of the best places to live in this state are in the New York City metro area, places that are unaffordable for most families. It's places like Great Neck Plaza, Jericho, Syosset, Manhasset Hills, and Kensington. But the Buffalo suburb of Williamsville is very nice, as is the Rochester suburb of Brighton. The worst places to live in New York are Buffalo and Rochester, along with Utica and Newburgh. Many of the worst places to live in this state are in what people here call upstate. A lot of that's because of a loss of jobs. We also learned that most people in the state live in the New York City metro area, and that New York has far more farms than most people think. The state is sure changing a lot lately, and nobody knows what the future holds for New York. But there's a lot more to New York than just that. We didn't talk about some New York history, interesting facts, and the issues that people in New York face today. So that's what we're going to do in this video, kind of pick up where we left off and talk about New York in a more lighthearted way. And hey, I'm wearing a suit for the first time ever, people, so you know I'm serious about it. Plus, we're going to meet people from New York who live there, who are going to tell us what it's like there and what things you should think about if you decide to make New York State your home. So let's get started. It's time for Corner House Tales, New York, the fallen empire state. This state, New York, is so crowded and full, but it's also a bunch of rednecks, too. Taxes high and the winter's bad, there's no wondering why all the people move. For all the New York news you need to know, I'm Skip Fritzman. Thanks, Skip. So if you're moving to New York, you need to know what's happening here. And if you live in New York, you should know what's going on in your state, too. Stuff like this. So right now, there's been a big discussion about the great New York exodus. Since the latest census, the state of New York has seen a loss of 1.4 million people, the most of any other state by far. It's not just a recent trend either. Going back to 1990, New York has lost five congressional seats, which is the most of all states, and Florida just overtook New York as the nation's third most populous state. Just in the last year alone, New York lost 126,000 people, again, making New York the state with the biggest population loss of all states. The population dropped about two-thirds of 1%. A lot of that was COVID-related. People left New York City in droves, since a lot of that city was shut down and all. Some of the New York City refugees were the elite who moved into nearby Connecticut or New Jersey. They wanted more space, since they were tired of being cramped indoors. Another big chunk of people who left was the group that had delayed retirement, but finally pulled the plug and moved south. 21% of the people who fled New York in the last decade went to Florida alone, where it's warmer and where the taxes are far lower. I mean, as it stands, New York State has the highest tax burden in the nation at nearly 13%. A lot of the people who left the state did so because of a loss of jobs. I mean, they were barely keeping their heads above water before the pandemic. One example is the black population. This group has been fleeing the Northeast for the South for a while now in what demographers call the Great Reverse Migration. There just aren't as many blue-collar jobs up here as there once were. A big slowdown in immigration is also a factor. The Trump administration cut back on a lot of the immigration coming in from other countries, and New York relies a lot on immigration. A quarter of the state's residents are immigrants, and immigration to New York City alone dropped to half of what it was prior to 2015. But even before the pandemic, the new immigration pattern had shifted from big inner cities to more rural areas in the South and Midwest. A recent poll indicated two out of five New Yorkers said they would leave the city if they were able to. And that's just New York City. Upstate, in cities like Buffalo, Rochester, and Syracuse, people have been leaving for decades now, as again, a loss of blue-collar manufacturing jobs has made it really hard to justify dealing with the high costs and the cold weather. I mean, look at California's population compared to New York's. The state of New York hadn't seen a population loss since the 1970s stagflation era. The result of the population loss has weakened New York's political strength a bit. The state lost a congressional seat by a mere 89 people. It also lost an electoral college vote. It's not just people, though. Companies are leaving New York, too. Why pay for valuable real estate with half-empty offices when lots of people are working remotely nowadays? Why deal with the high crime? Large companies were already trickling out of the state, but the pandemic put the company exodus into overdrive. More than 16% of available office space in New York City is empty. 
It's been three decades since there was this much available office space in New York City. Now, will New York City die? Of course not. Probably not. Maybe. It's pretty resilient, though. I mean, this is the leading financial and media capital of the world, and there are still some tech companies moving in. There's Silicon Alley and Tech Alley, which are both seeing growth. Maybe rent will fall so much, people will be lured back into the Big Apple. No one knows, but it's not looking good. The recent trend going back 20 years has been more people leaving big cities and into the suburbs, and the pandemic helped people realize they wanted to live even further out from the suburbs. When's the last time you heard somebody say they were moving to New York anyways? Okay, enough with that bad New York news. It's time for some New York facts, everyone. I'd love to learn about some New York facts. If you move to New York for some reason, you need to know some facts, right? That way you're knowledgeable about your future home. Stuff like this. I live in New Hampshire, but I love New York. I live in West Virginia, but I love New York. I live on Cape Cod, but I love New York. I live in North Carolina, but I love New York. I New York was the only colony not to vote yes on the Declaration of Independence. That's because New York was still trying to make a decision about the vote when the British attacked. So everybody fled New York and they never actually got to vote. Our first U.S. President, George Washington, was sworn in in New York City. That's because it was our first U.S. capital. New York City had more slaves than any other U.S. city outside of Charleston, South Carolina during the colonial days. 40% of New York City households had slaves at home. In Philadelphia, that number was 2%. There's 8.8 .8 million people in New York City, and it's the most populous city in the nation. You knew that. But did you know two out of three residents in this whole state live right here in this little area? Long Island is the biggest island in the lower 48. It's six times larger than the next biggest island, Padre Island, in Texas. Niagara Falls is the most visited tourist attraction in the world. 30 million people come here annually. It's also a fact that nearby Niagara Falls, New York is a city that's absolutely terrible and dangerous, and it's embarrassing that the rest of the world has to see this mess. Clean it up. Battery Park at the end of Manhattan was the original Ellis Island. It's true. It's also true that Ellis Island is within both New York and New Jersey. The cool part with the museum and the historical landmarks are in New York but New Jersey owns the park that's basically an old landfill. Ha ha, New Jersey. Adirondack Park is 6 million acres. It's bigger than Yellowstone, Glacier, Everglades, and the Grand Canyon National Parks combined. And Niagara Falls is the oldest national park. People still go over it in a barrel, even today. 1.7 billion people ride New York City subways every year. And there are 660 miles of subway track beneath the city. Most of it's under repair. 315 babies are born in New York City every day. You could fit 5,319,148 beers like this into the Statue of Liberty. It's true. I did the math. The Bronx is the only New York City bureau that's not on an island. Hempstead is actually a town in New York, but it has more than 700,000 residents. Within this town are 22 incorporated villages. If Hempstead were a city, it would be the second biggest city in the whole state. 40% of the whole state's population is on Long Island alone. Can you imagine that? 8 million people crammed on this one island? Of all major white American groups, there's more Italians in New York State than anyone else. Queens is the most ethnically diverse area on the entire planet. It was once where Hispanics moved in in large numbers, but today, Asians are the main group moving in. Here's how big New York City is. Fargo is the biggest city in North Dakota. There's more Koreans in New York City than there are people in Fargo. That's just crazy. Did you know New York City has a bigger Jewish population than anywhere else in the world outside of Israel? I did not know that New York has such a large Jewish population, Mappy. Thanks for that. Good for them. And that means it's time for some New York trivia, everyone. Let's call some people from New York and see if they can answer some tough New York trivia questions. Plus, this will give you a chance to meet some New York state locals before you even move here. New York trivia? Count me in.
All right, everybody. So we have a special guest on right now. You may recognize Cash Jordan. He's a YouTube personality out of New York City who is very popular and helps people find apartments. What's up, Cash? How you doing? Thanks for having me. Yeah, man. I'm sure a lot of my people uh, that watch me watch you. So I think they're going to freak out when they see you pop up to do some New York City trivia and talk about New York City a little bit. <laughs> I hope so. If they don't, I apologize in advance. <laughs> all right. So, all right. So I'm going to ask you five questions. The way it works is I ask five questions about the state of New York. You try to see if you can get any right. They're not too hard. Um, and then we'll talk about New York a little bit. How's that? Oh, boy. This is going to be the tough part. Oh, you'll be fine. Okay, so everybody knows the slogan, I heart New York, right? You know, it's all of the bumper stickers, that, that like iconic um, New York slogan. What year was that first invented? Well, I guess I get five opportunities here to broadcast my ignorance. I have absolutely no idea. Um, I'm just going to guess that it's 100 years old. I could be wrong. Okay, so right now we have Joseph on a call. He's coming to us from New York. He's lived there practically his entire life. He lives uh, in the state of New York. How's it going, Joseph? Wonderful. How are you? Good, man. So uh, as you can see, I'm dressed up and uh, that means that we're going to talk about New York today and we're going to do some trivia. And then in a little bit, we're going to talk about the state of New York. Are, are you ready to do some trivia? I'm ready. All right. I'm going to ask you five questions. Okay. So the first question is, everybody's seen that I heart New York slogan that's pretty much everywhere. Uh, it's very mm -hmm. touristy. Um, what year did that slogan, um, what year was that slogan invented? Ooh, I have a feeling it was before 9-11, but I wouldn't know what year. So I'm just gonna have to guess 2001. No, it was actually way earlier than yeah. that. It was in 1977. All right. Okay, so you missed the first one. Question no. number two. What's the best airport to fly in and out of? JFK, LaGuardia, or Newark? Well, it's not LaGuardia that I know. Um, in New York State, then you'd have to take JFK, but I think most people would pick Newark that are from the New York City area would pick Newark. Pilots hate LaGuardia, so I'm going to say that JFK is the best. Newark's in New Jersey. That doesn't count. It is JFK. That is, that is correct. JFK is the best awesome. airport. Awesome. All right. Cool. Yeah. All right, you got one out of two right. Question number three, who was the last Republican governor to be elected to the state of New York? They had a Republican governor? I don't know. Um, gee. Yeah, it's Giuliani was the mayor, so I, I have no idea. Well, that would be George Pataki. That is George Pataki in uh, 2002. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, so question four, so you got one out of three so far. Um, how many football teams are in the state of New York? Oh, geez. Jets, Giants, Bills. We got three? How many football teams are in the state of New York? One, the Buffalo Bills. Yeah, the Buffalo Bills. A lot of people might say three, but as, as most people know, several of them are not in New York. New York City didn't want them, so that's how it goes. All right, question five. Right. You got two out of four, right? Let's see if you can get the last one. This one might be a little hard. Oh, well. So how many states total can you see from the top of the Empire State Building? Uh, let's not do message. Let's do three. So let's do New Jersey, Connecticut, and Pennsylvania, even though that's definitely not true. Um, geez, what does New York touch? Pennsylvania, New Jersey, New York itself. Um Connecticut, throw that in there. Let's see. New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Connecticut. I mean, Connecticut and Massachusetts are the only other two that I can think of might work. I had... That's right. You got them. Those really? The five okay. You can All supposedly right. see those five states from the top of the Empire State Building. Well, I guess that this proves that if you're a real estate answer and someone gives you the answer, you can repeat it. And that's, that's <laughs> all you have to do to be a real estate <laughs> And now it's time for the history of New York in three minutes or less. A long time ago, before you ever thought about moving to New York, New York wasn't even New York. It was all under a big sheet of ice. Then the ice melted and millions of years later, the Native Americans came. The Mohicans, the Mohawks, and the Susquehannocks were the biggest groups. The Susquehannocks and Mohawks were mean. 
But the Lenape made the biggest mark. They called their camp Manahata, which means hilly island. Later, it was renamed Manhattan. The French were the first Europeans to come here. A guy named Giovanni de Verrazzano landed in present-day Manhattan in 1524. But it was the Dutch that really established a colony in the early 1600s, and they named the place New Netherland. Their first settlement was in present-day Albany, but they built forts up and down the Hudson River. Then the English came and took the land and named it New York. Then the Dutch got it back again and re-renamed it New Orange. But in 1675, the English took the area again once and for all, and it was called New York again. Then we threw the British out during the American Revolution. New York lost a ton of lives in that war. A third of all Revolutionary War battles were fought in New York. And many thousands of captured American patriots died of disease on ships in New York Harbor. More Americans died in New York's harbor due to disease and abandonment than died on the battlefields themselves. In 1825, the Erie Canal opened, which gave New York a huge advantage for shipping, which helped it become a political force even more. In 1892, they opened up Ellis Island in New York Harbor to organize all the new immigrants flocking here from all over the world. It was a dream to come to the USA via Ellis Island in the early 1900s. One third of our population today has relatives who passed through this very immigration station. Ellis Island was a big deal. People would come to reinvent themselves or just invent themselves. It was a new world. Between the years of 1892 and 1945, 20 million people entered the U.S. via Ellis Island. Before long, there were more languages spoken here than anywhere else in the world. Oh, and don't forget the whole Ellis Island thing got better in 1892 when the French gave us the Statue of Liberty. By the 1920s, New York City was the biggest metro area in the world with more than 6 million people. Then there was a the Great Depression. Then all the people came home from the war. Then a bunch of hippies went to a farm in upstate. Then in the 80s, New York City was really out of control with drugs and graffiti, and most of its boroughs were ghetto. But the city was saved by Rudy Giuliani, who made the city great again. Of course, we have to mention the World Trade Center disaster, which might have been the worst thing to ever happen to this country. Then a baseball team got really good, until it wasn't good anymore, which everybody outside of New York thought was fantastic. And that really happened. Okay, so we learned a lot more about New York in that video, didn't we? The big question is, can New York ever find a way to stop shrinking? Are people going to continue to leave this state for areas that are warmer and safer and less expensive? Can New York remain a political power even though it is shrinking? Will New York ever solve its problem with crime? The answer to all those questions is, nobody knows. New York City seems to be improving a little bit, but statewide, they have a lot of things to figure out. The fact is, it's very hard to find a place to move to in New York that's not crowded, and dangerous, and overpriced. And that's a shame. This state, New York, is so crowded and full, but it's also a bunch of rednecks, too. Taxes high and the winter's bad, there's no wondering why all the people move. Hey guys, if you learned something new about America or what it's like to live in America, great! You should think about subscribing and turning on your notifications. You can also click one of these videos or playlists for more. You can also now buy my songs on iTunes and other formats. Click the link in the description. Thanks for watching, and remember, while we all might have different views, we should all be nice to each other and try to make the U.S. a better place in a positive way. This is Sage Nick's manager. This has been a Corner House Entertainment production. And are you looking to move and need advice? I do consulting. That's right. I'll sit down and talk about where the next perfect place for you and your family should be. I do it all the time. Together, let's find you a new home that's safe and checks all your boxes. You can get my email in the description to find out how I can help you find your perfect relocation. Dude, so yeah, so good job. Um, now, people are going to be really curious to hear um, your, your opinion on New York City. Um, New York City has had an up and down last 10 years. Um, right now, it seems to be down when it comes to, um, you know, people are leaving. I hear people are going to start coming back. Um, give people your opinion on what it's like in New York City right now and what the short-term future is going to be there. I mean, you know, walking down the street, you know, all I film six videos a week. And, you know, in all those videos, you'll see signs of normal life. Um, 
I think that definitely certain businesses have it worse now than they might have had in 2019. Um, there are people leaving the city. I mean, I'm a transplant myself. I'm here for economic reasons, clearly. And I think that people that have economic reasons are going to keep coming. I mean, um, Google, Facebook, these big companies, even Apple, they've all signed new leases to have new buildings and new property. So there is a doubling down of certain industries on New York. Other industries are um, not doing as well as I guess they used to. So I think it depends on, you know, what your mission is. And if you can accomplish it here, you'll stay. If you can't, there are definitely cheaper places to go. Yeah, I mean, I you know, is it going to take, I, are rents lowering to the point that it's going to get, are people already starting to trickle back into New York City because I hear rents are going down to the point that now people are incentivized to come back? So they were a lot lower um, during the pandemic's, you know, onset, things really went way down. There was basically no rental activity. 2020 was not the best year for my um, my real estate business, which is, that's the office we're in right now. Uh, but rents have actually come back up. Inventory, all that inventory, I should call it all that pandemic inventory, that's been snapped up um, and inventory is kind of tight right now. So the market did rebound to a certain extent. There are um, still areas of the city where you can find a great deal. Certain parts of Brooklyn are still super affordable compared to, you know, popular areas of Manhattan. Um, but people that signed long-term leases when the pandemic started, landlords were offering two-year leases and there's people that are paying pandemic rent now, and that's going to keep happening for another year. So there are people that saved a lot of money. I'm assuming that next summer we'll start to see more and more apartments come back on the market that have been gone uh, for at least the last 12 to 16 months. I guess the best answer is to kind of talk about, you know, who it is that drops everything and comes here. And that kind of ties in with why rents dropped so much when the pandemic started. When the pandemic started, you know, that aspiring actor, that, you know, that person that was going to get a job at a restaurant and try to make it, you know, doing something else, pursuing their dream, those people didn't come here because the city was locked down. There was just no way to come here and accomplish anything unless you were already here and you had a remote job. And then at that point, the arguments in, you know, in uh, illustrious publications were, well, just work remote, you know, and wait it out. And a lot of people did do that. But now you'll you see um, you see a, that same crowd is starting to come back. That crowd that says, hey, you know, I'm going to begin my professional life in New York. I'm going to move to New York and try to make it those people are starting to come back. And those were the first people that left. Those are also the first people that are starting to come back. And that's who drives a lot of the rental market in these popular parts of town. You know, you'll have a, an eight by eight bedroom in the East Village, which fits nothing. Somebody will rent that that has nothing. And it's a good matchup because that person now has the opportunity to, you know, start chasing after their New York City dream. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I hear stories that in New York city about people that like live in little teeny tiny, like apartments that are 10 by 10 yep. and pay like 3000 a month. Is that, is that a myth? Is that really a thing? Um, my YouTube channel has apartment tours of places that might even be smaller than that. Um, it's definitely like an, like the best way to equate living in a New York apartment, um, is, you know, a really nice camper van, right? Like a really nice camper van, really nice RV that could be a New York apartment on wheels some of the smaller ones. Mm -hmm. um, give people an idea on the different, some, some parts of, of New York city. And I mean, all five boroughs um, that might be kind of under the radar that you think people should maybe think about that are thinking about moving to New York city, maybe where they can consider that they wouldn't find anywhere else. Um, you know, so, inside Intel. Sure. I mean, I'm kind of the of the mindset that, you know, if you're coming here and you don't know where to live, figure out where it is you need to get to physically. Because if you're going to move here and pay the rent, there's got to be some reason. You, get, you have an office, you have some place where you have to be on a semi-regular basis. So plan your move around that. Um, I guess if, you, if you're working remote and you don't have to actually live anywhere here, there are, you know, certain parts of Brooklyn you can really find a nice apartment. They might not be the most convenient. Greenpoint, that's where I was today filming an apartment tour. And I had a 15 minute walk from the apartment 
to the train that I took, which is unacceptable for somebody who might have to commute every day to Midtown. You don't want to be walking 15 minutes both ways in the snow. But, you know, if you don't have to be at the office all the time, you can get a nice place in a quiet part of town that's still in New York and um, has local coffee shops and all the stuff that you find here that you won't necessarily find, in, at least in Massachusetts, where I'm from. Um, so that, that would be one option that meets that description. What, what would it what would that apartment cost, do you think, down in Brooklyn? A nice uh, that, place. This, uh, one, this one was a sale. It was a one bedroom with a, with a private backyard and a downstairs for six hundred and ninety thousand. Mm -hmm. And is that uh, considered is, uh, a good deal? Well, I mean, everything's everything's a good deal, right? Or or a bad deal. It just really depends on you know. Do you like the location? And um, is it something that you can afford? You know, if you were to put 20% down, is that mortgage, is the, are the taxes and maintenance, is that something that, you know, benefits you more than renting an equivalent apartment? It might for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that was, that was helpful. What are some other little, if you could rattle off a few, maybe two or three neighborhoods in New sure. York City that you think most people maybe don't know about that you could give some like so, inside information. Yeah. So this might be useful. Um, if you're going to live in Manhattan, typically, if you're below Central Park, typically apartments on the east side are going to be cheaper than the west side. This isn't, you know, uniformly true listing by listing, but, you know, the east village is generally cheaper than the west village. The lower east side is typically cheaper than Soho. Um, Midtown East can be more expensive than Midtown West. That's like the one area where that's not true. But generally on the east side, you'll be able to find, you know, something uh, something affordable. Gramercy Park area is typically cheaper, eh, cheaper than Chelsea. Um, so if you're looking to save money, East is usually better. And if you don't know which way is East, just look for apartments in the morning and walk towards the sun. In my mind, once you get that, because that's your reason for being here, once you've eliminated that as part of like the apartment search, you know, you know which neighborhood you might be interested in, you know, you know geographically where you're going to be. Then at that point, now you're, you're like, okay, now I'm going to start looking at actual apartments. You know, do I want to live in something that's modern and new and fancy, or do I want to live in something that's old? I mean, New York City is an old city. So it has a lot of old buildings. Typically, those don't have elevators. You might be using a laundromat for the first time in your life if there's no laundry in the apartment, which is a shock for a lot of people. Um, but that is a way to save money. And... Um, you know, typically that new fancy apartment, that's something that kind of comes at a premium no matter which part of town it's in. If you compare the, you know, the shiny new building to the older looking, maybe less modern place to live, typically that shinier place has a higher price tag. And sometimes the apartment can actually be smaller because building codes and stuff now aren't what they were over 100 years ago when some of these places were built. And you know, an old building might be grandfathered into a certain extent, but like a new building, it's got to have hallways that are a certain width. It's got to have certain safety features and all of that stuff, even though it's helpful and I'm glad that they have it, it does take up space. So that's something to kind of keep in mind. Usually an older building will give you more space. And if you're able-bodied and you can walk up six flights of stairs, um, you're willing to use a laundromat, maybe you can get a nicer apartment. I, it's good. It's refreshing to hear somebody be so optimistic about a place that all a lot of times you hear doom and gloom, crime, out of control, bad politics, frustrated people. You, you're you're optimistic about a place that, that you move to and you love. That's great to hear. It's refreshing. Well, you know, I mean, bad politics is part of New York City's history, right? <laughs> so, um, you know, that's just, there's a lot of different groups that, have something to say about how the city's run and uh, you know, it is what it is. Um, I just think that in spite of, you know, what you might think, you know, regardless of someone's place on the political spectrum, whether you agree with everything that happens or whether you don't, um, I think that everybody can kind of agree with economic opportunity. And if that opportunity is here for you, it might be here in a capacity that it just isn't somewhere else. Like where else could I make a living renting apartments to people? Probably, not to the extent that I have here that I would anywhere else. It just, it's totally different, you know, but here it's its own unique curiosity and it's its own thing that you can get involved with and get excited about. So I think that, um, you know, if you want to really enjoy New York city, just don't read any of the newspapers, <laughs> don't watch the news and just lo live here and love it. And you'll have a great time. So let's talk about the state of New York. Um, 
you know, I, I, I have been kind of harping on the state because it's losing a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Um, in fact, it's lost pretty much more, more people than any other state um, percentage wise. A lot of people have left or a lot of people that were going to leave are leaving taxes, politics, weather, um, you know, New York's losing a seat um, and an electoral college vote in the next election. What's the word on the street uh, in your circles? How do people feel about the near term future of New York State? All right. Well, in, in New York City, it's almost like a lot of them, it, it's as if nothing's changed. They're all, you know, just living their lives. There's not always an answer to just leave. It's kind of like the city is huge already for them. So a lot of them are staying there. In the suburbs, though, you have a lot of people moving to Florida, of course. You've probably covered that quite a bit. Um, when they want to retire, they can't really afford, especially even the nice suburbs of New York City, they can't quite afford that. Uh, upstate, I don't know if people are moving out of state as much, but a lot of them are either feel like they're stuck there because a lot of our people that are on farms, obviously, not, are not going to just up and leave that quickly. But a lot of uh, young people, when they uh, get to college, they then move to one of the bigger cities, whether it be New York or even Buffalo, Rochester, people are moving to those places from where their small town through their college, then to any of those big cities upstate, even Syracuse, um, where, you know, we still think of them as Rust Belty losing population, but some of them are rebounding, going for that demographic. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But like, how do people feel about like the, the future? So mm-hmm. the people leaving aside, Right. Yeah. Like, I mean, it, clearly a lot of people are leaving the state now. Yeah. Some may come back after COVID's over um, when rents come down in the big city. Yeah, that would um, help. I'm sure people will start to trickle back in. Um, but like in terms of like the, the near term future for the, the, the state in general, um, are people optimistic in New York? Um, I think they are. Yeah. There's, there's not like a ton of uh, doomsday scenarios going on. The people that think that are already leaving. So I don't see a ton of panic at all. Mm-hmm. What would be the draw? So I'm a young family. Yeah. Um, I I never hear people tell me they're moving to New York. I, I hear people leaving New York, but very rarely do I have anybody say like, yeah, we're thinking about moving to New York um, state or city. Um, yeah. What would be the draw for a family that wanted to get out from where they are to, to move to New York state? What, why would they be drawn there? Well, I think most of the people that are wanting to move to New York are all wanting to come generally to the New York City area still because of still the uh, the great cultural center that New York provides. People still talk about the Broadway shows, even though they just started back up. Um, all the entertainment opportunities, all the economic opportunities just for jobs, financial, um, healthcare jobs. They all still want that in New York City, good times or bad times. Upstate, I don't see... A ton of draw yet. I know Buffalo is really trying to rebuild, just make their city more of a cultural center and just to make it attractive at all as a place to live. Um, Now, where I live in the northern suburbs of New York City, those places are doing pretty well still. Housing prices are going up. People are moving in. The schools people are really attracted to. Long Island has some pockets of that as well, where they kind of like the um, some of the housing prices and the and um, even with the dense population, there are some economic opportunities even in Long Island itself or to commute in. But yeah, it's that draw still of New York City that people still love, in my opinion. Yeah, but like how do people afford it? Like, you know, I, I mean, I can't imagine that a, a, the average family can move in. No, not the average family. So these are the people that are getting the big jobs in financial, so working on Wall Street or of the like technology People that have those big jobs, they want to come to New York City, just like they want to still go to San Francisco. Uh, other families like that, they're not going to be moving in. They're moving to places like Florida and, or even some places in the South or Arizona, Tennessee, I know places that you like to cover, I know. So mm-hmm. those type of families, uh, maybe there's some areas of Long Island that are for them that they could commute to something for, but Westchester County for sure less and less affordable options. Mm -hmm. Now you've, so you have a YouTube channel, explore the Northeast. Yeah. And I've used uh, at least one of your videos to kind of 
supplement something that I was talking about. And thank you for that. Um, you could use it. Well, yeah. Like, so like you've seen a lot of the state probably more than most people have. Where are mm -hmm. some hidden gems in New York state that are affordable that aren't ghetto? <laughs> okay. Well, I, I would be biased because I actually did this. Um, during the summer of the COVID pandemic, I just up and left because I was working from home anyway. And I went up to the Finger Lakes. So you have Ithaca for sure. Um, that's the biggest, one of the biggest growing places in the state right now. Of course, it's supplemented by Cornell and Ithaca College. So there's a lot of, even some uh, starting to get some sprawling um, suburbs to that as well. Um, and even some of the smaller cities on the northern ends of the Finger Lakes, I would look into Canandaigua if you get a chance. It's a small city, but you're seeing a lot of, um, you know, these um, housing developments and luxury uh, things right along the lake. So you have those areas that are not as much in the hustle and bustle of these uh, bigger Rust Belt cities. The industry is not quite as the same as like you have in Buffalo, where it just takes up half the city or, or area at some points where there, yeah, there's some things that were along the lake, but those lakes are really long, really narrow, and really uh, sparsely populated. I would see stuff like that continuing to grow for sure. Um, the Capital District, that's the Albany, Troy, Schenectady area. There's a lot of room for that to fill into, and they definitely are attracting new people. Now, of course, that doesn't completely satisfy your question. There are some pockets there that I know you would not be interested in, like uh, downtown Schenectady, I'm sure is not your cup of tea. Um, but I, I see they're trying to attract that as well. And then the last one I'd say, and this probably appears high on your list, is the Saratoga area. So Saratoga Springs, that's becoming a, a place. A lot of younger people are moving there as well. I had a sister who tried to move there, but uh, ended up staying in Troy, which is also trying to really turn things around. That's that Troy is a lot more uh, run down, especially uh, back when my parents went to college in Troy. It was very run down then. They're trying to turn it around, but... Yeah, those are the areas. Mm -hmm. Saratoga and Finger Lakes for sure. What are some other little cool spots in New York that you kind of stumbled across and within okay. the state that you thought were really interesting? Maybe not for a family to move to, but just kind of like really cool little areas. Because um, a lot of people think New York, I know two thirds of the state lives in, in the big in yeah. the city. Most of it's just rural, the small towns mm -hmm. uh, outside of some of the other bigger cities up there. But a lot of people don't realize New York has just kind of like a whole country kind of living up in, mm -hmm. in a lot of the state give people an idea on some of the stuff you've seen uh, uh, up up out of the the bigger cities well, out of, uh, well i'm glad you asked for a few places i like um so i like a lot of the upstate cities because just, they're just like a like a gritty feel it's not for everyone but some of the small towns outside i'm gonna name a couple of my favorites right now they're along the susquehanna river i don't know if you're familiar with that one uh i like the village Sorry. Owego, not Oswego, Owego. It's a really nice small town there and just a really nice community feel. Um, that was actually rated by one of those magazines as coolest small town in America like six years ago, except like a couple years ago, that was replaced by Beacon, New York. Have you heard of that one? Mm -hmm. It's covered Beacon. That's a little bit north on the Hudson River across from one of the worst cities, Newburgh. That one you've covered. Yes. Right across the river from that one. So along the Hudson River, Along all these rivers, you have a lot of really nice small uh, towns and villages. And a, a lot of people that want that feel are definitely going to gravitate to those places. Uh, we've already mentioned the Finger Lakes, so just to name a couple more, Watkins Glen, uh, that one has some. And the whole Finger Lakes area has some incredible waterfalls. Everybody already knows about Niagara Falls, so I'll, I'll skip talking about that. Um, and uh, the Adirondacks, uh, people love um, the outdoors up there. Lake Placid, um, Saranac Lake, Tupper Lake, all those are just great outdoor adventures. I know during the pandemic, actually, Upstate really thrived from people just getting out of the city for a little while. And I was, I guess, part of that. Uh, so I was glad to help out. Um, yeah, Hudson River, like the entire Hudson River has, has some hidden gems that might be hard to live in. Economic opportunity, not so great. Like I mentioned a Wego. A lot of people that live there commute to Binghamton to do stuff there. There's the university there. That's where I went undergrad. So that's how I discovered that whole area. Um, yeah, along the Susquehanna River, Delaware River is a lot more sparse. So, but yeah, mm -hmm. people like living near water and you have plenty of water in New York. Of course, be careful though. Uh, 
along some of those smaller rivers, they flood every few years and cause a gigantic disaster, let's just say. So what about some areas that you found that you were like, oh my God, this place is a dump. Uh, you talked about Newburgh. Are there some other um, towns that or cities that you think are just past their prime that are struggling in, in New York state? Well, I got to give you credit because you actually pretty much correctly identified a lot of them in your video. Okay. So yeah. Newburgh, for sure, that's still a huge problem with gang and activity and police corruption, as I understand. Niagara Falls, once you're out of the small tourist area, it is very run down, of course. Um, I, I gave a lot of love to the big cities, but Rochester has a lot of bad pockets. Syracuse as well, where it's almost like they don't care. We just We just have to... We have too many problems to worry about. Just maybe we'll get to it eventually. Um, if I can think of one more, uh, like places like Troy, they really turned that place around, but there's still work to do. Um, that's the capital district. And that probably covers most of the things that I would say immediately are places I got to mm -hmm. really watch out for. Oh, one more actually. In Westchester County, they do say the worst place in Westchester County is Mount Vernon. That is a small dense city basically um between yonkers and new rochelle you probably are more familiar with those too yeah so i just gotta ask you so like um you know new york city gets a a, a bad uh rap from the especially the the conservative outlets like fox news that say it's crime ridden and it's out of control and it's a dump and it's poorly run and everyone's leaving and it's never gonna be the same do you agree with any of that? Does New York get a bad rap um, from what you think of, of that place? Well, I hate to sort of change the topic again, but I'm going to compare this with San Francisco again, where Fox News seems to really go against them as well. And yeah, there are a lot of problems that exist. Still, your chances of being involved in a problem when you're there are low, but that might be meaningless to people that are actually victims. But yeah, there are a lot of... Um, of uh, managerial issues, let's just say. And whether it comes to manifest itself, it doesn't seem to bother a ton of the people that live there at the moment. Maybe it will. Not not, not a ton of, again, not a doomsday scenario. Though. And when I was in San Francisco, it wasn't one there either. But yes, there there is truth to, to both points of view. I hate to not show my political side here, but yeah, yeah it's, it's yes and yes. So it does deserve some of the heat, yes. And but it's not as bad as it's portrayed. Well, I'm, you can put up a camera to every bad thing that happens, and yes, it'll be true. But how representative that is of everything else, it is confirmation bias, and we're all victims of it. So we mm -hmm. uh, make our decisions based on what we see and what they choose to tell us. So yeah, it's it like like many other cities there are bad parts and good parts, and Maybe it's some of it's higher average than other countries or other parts of the of this country. But still, it's not the worst place in the world.